Good day, this is Brett Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Dicker. By now you should know that our society is not exactly what we want it to be, and therefore my post hole dicking means very simple, I continue to dick on the foundation, the solid foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. We talked recently about that Jesus paid more taxes than President Trump. By now you should have heard maybe that he only pays a minimum, bare, bare, bare minimum, 750 bucks a year. He's only a billionaire, as he claims. He only took what he was entitled to, everything. And it is scary when we think about it, that we can talk about a person like him but that's not the issue today. Trump has made his decision to follow the devil. That's okay. That's his choice. But what about you, the body of Christ? I am very concerned about those that have no clue where they're going because they are following a madman. And history has proven that it has occurred many times before. So we are not the first generation, but folks, I am sincerely concerned about you, the body of Christ. That is what we're talking about. Is this going to be a rapture, Armageddon, entering the kingdom of God? Those are heavy, serious subjects. And you said, what does it have to do with President Trump? everything folks because a spirit of the antichrist is prevailing in the white house yes my friends leadership of the body of christ listen carefully you put your head in the sand that doesn't mean it doesn't happen you folks gotta wake up and smell the roses i'm going to discuss something that you do not like, but it's important, like medicine. You need to hear this. Those that are suffering from ticklish ears, the stuff that is poking in your eye, uh, sorry, in your ears, and it's not getting out there because you stuffed it so many, many years. Actually, we're going to talk about centuries, because some of it is not really your fault. The problem that most people have is why are we talking about certain issues? One of the issues that I have highlighted a couple of times is President Donald Trump. At least that's what he considers himself. But in reality, what is he? Is he a president or is he a dupe? I believe that he is also a marionette. He's somebody that is jumping as high as he is told. And why am I saying this? Not to discredit this man, but to share something. You see, folks, we all have been duped. Not only President Trump, we all have been duped. And what I say is being duped is being hoodwinked. But some of us have a characteristic to hoodwink others at all times. And President Trump has set the example. He set the bar so high that it is very hard to repeat this because somebody will make a new rule that this is no longer allowed as a person that runs a state or a government. But what about the government of JC, Jesus Christ, the way the body of Christ is known? His true name was Jesua Hamashiach. His true name is Yeshua Hamashiach. If we are looking back at the first century believers, then we ought to think, what would they say if those believers would enter our church, our place of worship, or our homes? How would they respond? I think many would be scared. They would see so many things that Yeshua HaMashiach never talked about. He never said, you got to pray 
to me as a God. He's the son of God because God respected him so much because he was the first one. And he said, that is the way, the truth and the life. That is the way to go. And what was the way to go? To honor God with all my heart. Folks, do you honor God with all your heart? See, there came a time in my life that I became concerned for I could no longer call myself a Christian. Gradually, I'd seen so many misrepresentations. I went to school. I went to the seminary. I went to a practical Bible school. And I tell you, folks, working for 12 years in prison, I advised people based on what I'd learned. But then going through it myself, and going through a time where you get examined on every little aspect of your life, whatever you did. And we paid millions and millions of dollars to lawyers to prove that what we did was with the right intent. I was found guilty. And sharing a time in a maximum security prison is not fun, folks. But it was good because it made me think about an awful lot of things. How come? I make my decisions based on what I learned in books, based on what I learned at university, colleges, courses I've taken, extra courses, but there were still manipulations. What about the body of Christ? Are you living a victorious life? Are you familiar with what Jesua Hamashiach, known to you as Jesus Christ, what he really taught us? When I talk about Christianity, I talk to the body of Christ. I realize that President Trump has been the forerunner because he is a president. Everyone recognizes him. But why is he president? Because the majority of Christianity, those that are living in the United States of America, those eligible to vote, the majority of them are Christians, or so-called Christians. But folks, there came a time in my life that I refused to be called a Christian anymore, because it finally started to dawn to me what Christianity was all about. See, when you love the Lord with all your heart, you love the Lord, and love will tell you something. When we speak about President Trump, it's only because he is the head of state. He is also a poor example because even Jesus paid more taxes than Trump. Time magazine has really validated the fact that Mr. Trump is a miser. He owes hundreds of millions of dollars. And if you read my book, Deception Protocol, then and it's available on Amazon, you will find out that it is not hundreds of millions of dollars, it's billions of dollars that he owes. When he got billed out just before he was inaugurated, he owed a minimum of $1.8 billion. But you look at the influences that he submitted himself to, the people that inspired him, they were lusting after money. So now I come back to the body of Christ. What are you lusting after? Are you lusting after money and craving it so badly as Mr. Trump? Or are you really lusting to please the Lord? 
Because if we're pleasing the Lord, you will do what I did. I started to examine why did I believe in PMS, in the politics, the way they were run in the United States, America, Canada, Holland, Europe, all over, in money matters. When I worked on Wall Street, I worked on a private bank, and I learned money matters on a complete different level. $100 million plus deals in the mid-90s already. I tell you, you are surprised and amazed what you learn and what you see, and then to discover what money is really all about. And then the S for spirituality, religion. As I mentioned, I went to a Bible school. I went to a seminary. I worked in the field as an evangelist, a missionary. But folks, I ended up being totally disillusioned because I realized that I was not doing what Yeshua HaMashiach asked me. I wasn't following the way. I was following the path. And let me stop for a moment. Let me put it in a simple way. Is stress a conspiracy of faith to destroy it? Wow. That's a question you have heard maybe before. I also had a headline, even Jesus paid more tax than Donald Trump. A scary prospect versus the end time. And then a little line below. Thank you, suckers. I rather pay prostitutes than taxes. Wow. Is hostage to the devil, destroying faith. Are we a hostage to the devil? A scary prospect. If Judge Barrett is to become a Justice Barrett. Folks, this is the desire of Donald Trump and his cronies. Don't ever think that Donald Trump act on his own. He is following orders and instructions. Satanic ritual abuse. The trust the truth does not care about your opinion. Let me repeat that. The truth does not care about your or my opinion. There were long concealed records that show that Trump's chronic losses and years of tax avoidance. Folks, it's not just Trump, but us, the followers of the body of Christ, we believe that we do certain things based on information that was provided to us. But reality is, are we suckers? The great apostasy, long concealed records show the body of Christ in bed with Baal or Moloch. You know what that stands for? Versus the end time. Yes, you will see the pictures. I will put them in the video. But friends... Listen to what is being said. The great apostasy. Did the first century believers go to bed with paganism? You know what Baal or Moloch stood for? They were worshipping Satan. And you know how they worshipped them? By killing little babies. Yes, folks. That is how sad it is killing babies and maiming them and their blood was supposed to make them rich and they would find favor with satan but satan is only about one thing worshiping king satan and if you lust for money so desperately and grave it so desperately as mr trump the president of the united states sets an example and his senators that make decisions over your life, the church's life, and how you are supposed to believe, you will find out that you are hoodwinked again and again and again till you wake up and take responsibility. There's a very old book called the Bible, and I prefer to take it from the old Bible. So I use the complete Jewish Bible in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3, it says, don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for the day will not come until after the apostasy has come, 
and the man who separates himself from Torah has been revealed, the one destined for doom. Am I a little bit heavy-handed when I talk about these subjects, folks? You are the body of Christ. You are supposed to be the followers of the way, the truth, and the life. Can you handle the truth? So in other words, a great apostrophe, apostasy started when the first century believers went into bed with paganism. The apostasy, that fatal period when the emperor Constantine called himself a Christian. From this time forward, 325, the Christians had no more of the spirit of Christ than the heathens. You know who said that? John Wesley, a revival man. He was searching for God's love inside and what was holding the body of Christ back. The apostasy, that fatal period when the emperor Constantine called himself a Christian. Maybe you ever heard it, maybe you never heard it, I don't know. But there wasn't time that Yeshua HaMashiach got confronted with the Roman Empire and they ordered his death. There was no harmony in between the first century believers and the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire were believers of anything under the moon but God himself. They were not servant. They were not servitude to God. They were men and women that only pursued the many hundreds of God, Bill and Mola, evil. And you know what happened? Eventually, the Roman Empire gave a chance to the body of Christ to become powerful, fake power, under a few conditions. And one of them was, there is not just one God, there are three gods, because that's what we Romans believe in. And so before the first century believers knew it, their leadership had gotten the power from the satanic side, from the Roman Empire. And you know, they became the church, the Roman Catholic Church. And all that came with Roman belief was included. False God, paganism to the core, false, I hate to say it, holidays. Uh-oh, Christmas, Easter, all those celebrations from the heathens, they were incorporated in the church. And the body of Christ got a beautiful name. They called themselves the body of Christ. While they're basically the body of Satan. Satan, whatever you want to call him. You are deceived, my friend. We are deceived. When we look at Christianity, we are celebrating Satan every single day. When we seek the presence of the Lord, we are celebrating God Almighty. You don't need to be called in certain name to make sure that you're part and parcel of it. God knows you. You that is listening right now, you will know what I'm talking about because folks, I had to go through the desert university to understand this part. I thought it. I didn't want to believe it. But I'm a reader. I've read hundreds of books and maybe a couple of thousands so far. And you know, they always said, with age you will get wisdom. And I laughed about that. But if you see me today, I am 70 years of age. I was born in June 1950. That makes me, as of today, 70 years of age. That is November 2020. Uh, we are not November. We're still talking September, almost October. And it has taken me a long time to be willing to accept it. I was on the road for billions and billions of dollars. We had assets like there was no tomorrow till we got attacked. I understand the pressure that President Trump is under. 
And it is not an easy one. It is a fight that we all have. A fight willing to accept that we failed and that we are sinners. And we have to come to the conclusion that our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. See, my Father's kingdom is coming soon, folks. And we have to make a decision. This is all a foreplay showing you what is really going to happen. But during this pandemic, our eyes might go open, might wide open. Please open your eyes wide. Don't keep them wide shut because so many people have seen that movie talking about a time. And even that time was manufactured for Christianity knows better. You know the voice of the Lord. And if you're a true believer, you will seek him. Go on your knees, folks. I am on my knees, praying for my family. For me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. I have a responsibility for me. I have a responsibility for my house, which are my family, my wife and my kids. But you are part of the family of God. And please, 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 don't let yourself be fooled again by a man that is so braggadocious. He followed all kinds of people and that he lives that life that is his problem. That he wants to impose his will on the United States, folks. That is his problem. Your problem is when the Lord will ask you accountability and he can say, well done, you good and faithful servant. Over little have you been responsible. And over much I will put you. Come and enter into the kingdom of God. That is my desire, to see you there. Am I going to cry, shout, yell? No, I don't need to. Because the spirit of God will convince you. Is Mr. Trump beyond reproach? No, he will have to account for his own stuff. His problem, not mine. But I feel sorry for him. I know what it is when you're so caught up that you can't stop lying to cover the other lie. It's sad, and it doesn't matter if you're the Pope, the President, or if you're you. We are all responsible for our own actions. Maybe this will wake you up. Body of Christ, check it out. If those men, the men that are used by God in an awesome way, started to wonder why, what happened? Christianity, wake up, please. Don't keep your head in the sand. Remember, tough times never last, but tough people do. Because we are built on that solid foundation or can be built if we continue to work on that foundation, the rock. Because that is the solution. God bless you. Bye for now.